Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your life A to Z. We have another great show planned for you today. We're going to start things off with Gail Bass, who is in the kitchen with Chef Ivan Flowers to get things started. Good morning, you two. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. You know what, Ivan? I have to say, I am ready to try out the steak because I think I'm going to be put through my paces in the workout segment. And you're working your way through the alphabet today, and yes. you've got T for T-bone? T-bone. T-bone steak with garlic sherry steakhouse mushrooms Ooh. and we're going to show you what it means for a true steakhouse mushroom true steakhouse steak. mushroom all right so this isn't just mushroom gravy that you're throwing on this absolutely not <laughs> he's like how dare i bring up mushroom gravy lisa when he's talking about this beautiful steak mm, i like mushrooms on my steak though Ooh, that sounds delicious they're, they're delightful thank you gail <laughs> i was chef ivan flowers from fornos restaurant Making the letter T. T. We've been going through the alphabet. What are you going to do when you get to Z? Uh, I don't know. Then we're going to be in trouble. All That's right, T for T-bone. For T-bone. And um, we want to get our pan hot. And when you look at a T-bone, um, you, you've got the New York. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have the filet mignon. If this was a bigger filet mignon, it would be a porterhouse. Oh, is that the difference? Absolutely. Okay. So one of the, you know, one of the, why meat is so expensive is when you're taking the filet mignon out, and there's two per steer, you're left with the New York. And that's why filet is so expensive okay. in New York. Okay. With the T-bone, you get a combination of both. And what we're going to do, a little bit of olive oil, and you want your pan pretty hot, and you can see your oil, the viscosity changes right. immediately. And that's what you want, almost to the smoke point. A little bit of French sea salt right into the oil. Oh, not the steak. We're gonna do both. Okay. That's gonna heat that up and give it a really good sear, okay? Then on this side, we're gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. On that side, it's in the pan. We're gonna go right in. Oh, salt and pepper side, not down, mm -hmm. it's on top. Exactly. Okay. And we're gonna build a good sear on this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sear both sides and then we're gonna keep the pan and we're gonna build a steakhouse mushroom. Mm. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And some interesting things Ivan has taught me is um, when you're cooking your steak, you probably have it in the refrigerator, right? You take it out of the refrigerator, put it on the grill. But you said, let the steak sit. Let it sit for a good 45 minutes to an hour. That long? Absolutely. And that will allow all the juices to be even in the steak and it relaxes the muscle. If you come out with an ice cold steak, it's very, very tough. Oh. And then when you go to cook it, the outside sears and the inside sears. And there's no a issue with rare. keeping it out for no. 45 minutes? Oh, no. Half an hour to 45 minutes. I bet it'll you still, didn't know that, huh? Yeah. Okay. And it'll still stay at a great temp. Do you wait to season it till right before you cook it? Or do you season it and let it sit? Right before you cook it. Okay. Because otherwise it'll pull too much juice out. Okay. Look so at the nice color. We've yeah. got a nice sear on this. We do both sides. We're going to go into a pan. Ah. And that's going to go into a 500 degree oven. What's your favorite choice of cooking a steak? A grill? I like this, I like this, this way. This way, pan, yeah. I like oven. this way. I um, think a lot of people think you only, that steak only tastes good grill, but not oh, necessarily. Oh, no, no. no. Okay. You build a really nice uh, sear on this. Okay, okay, we've got the little font, the little, the little pieces of, you know, the The love, as my sister-in-law calls it. That's the love at the bottom of the pan. So we go in with cornini mushrooms, okay? okay. And that's going to start to cook Again, your favorite applesauce, the garlic puree. <laughs> now, did you do anything to those uh, mushrooms before? I just cooked them a little bit for TV. Okay. Just about two or three minutes, just okay. to glaze them. Okay, garlic is going to cook out very, very quickly. Yes. Okay. That's the beauty of garlic puree. We're going to go in with sherry. Mmm. Sherry. We need that song for sherry. Oh, look at that. Got to warn us when the flames come live. And, and it's Bob. quick. It's that real was quick. quick. Oh, that's a good flavor. So we've got the sherry in there. Now we're going to go in. You have to have a little butter. Well, yeah. A little bit's not bad. Of the real stuff. The good stuff. The, the real good butter. stuff. Yummy, yummy, yummy. As this butter starts to melt, we're going to hit it with Japanese breadcrumbs. Okay? Really? Yeah. Okay. That's the panko? That, very good. The panko. And that's going to put a little bit of a crunchiness on the mushroom. Oh, okay. So... Butter starts to melt. Not fried, but it's going to have yeah. a crispiness. Just yeah. very, very light. Very, very light. You and haven't it, dropped the mushroom yet. No, I'm not so yet. I'm so impressed. A little salt, a little pepper, and we're just going to let that go. That's going to build a little bit of a, of a, of a coating. Mm. Now, a true steakhouse mushroom is cooked in the pan that the steak was cooked sure. in. Sure. Okay. And they started that in, the, I'd say, in the 1930s. 
when they were cooking steaks, not on grills, on pans. And my grandparents used to own a bar on the west side of uh, New York in the 30s, and they used to cook this mm. way. It was a great picture, and in the backyard they had the gigantic tortoises. Oh, and, in New York? Yeah, in New York, and they were sitting there and they were eating. I wish I had brought the picture in. <laughs> they sold tortoises the, in New York? Tor New York in the 30s, City? yeah. Wow. That, that, if you and could smell this. That's okay. the mushroom. So the steak goes in the oven, and when you come back, we'll top it all off? 500 degrees. Oh, 500. Eight, eight to 10 minutes. Oh. That's it. And I'll show you how we finish the mushrooms and how we're going to glaze the steak on the finish. Yeah. And you have a better chance of the steak not being dry, I bet, when you do it this way versus a grill. A lot of times people burn it or overcook it. If you build a good sear and then you blast it in the oven, you'll get medium rare to perfection every right, time. Pop that baby in the oven because when we come back, we're going to do all that other stuff. I can't wait to taste it. it looks, smells delicious. Thank you, Ivan. If you want the recipe, of course, you can go to our website, azfamily.com forward slash your life. You'll find the recipe there. Pretty simple. Just a few ingredients. It's the Absolutely. technique, people. Let your steak temper for a good 45 minutes. Let the steak minutes. speak for itself. There you go. There you go. Orno's restaurant, of course, in Sedona, T-Bone. T-Bone. seared it, you bake, put it in the oven. Roast it in the oven. Um, you've got your mushrooms here with your, you had your, you know, your nice steak font, garlic and sherry. Take a little bit, go on the steak. Don't waste any flavor. Mm. Here we've done on the show before, we've done the garlic rosemary glaze. I have a little bit of verbena in there, which is a little bit of a lemon herb, okay? You're gonna go right on the steak with that. And that's just garlic? It's garlic, lemon, rosemary, and verbena. No butter. Little butter. Ah, nothing wrong with that. Little I was butter. just noticing. Now in the you restaurant, look how pretty that looks. we'll do a double cut. This will be double the size, and then I take it off the bone, and I cut the fillet and the strip. Oh, and you I'm, do? And then I put it back on the bone and serve it for oh, two. Oh, how nice are yeah, you? Because women nice... don't like to cut and do yeah, all that work. Yeah. And you know, it's a nice presentation. That's why women like fillets. They don't want to work at it. They don't want any bone. Or, or fat. Or fat. Yeah, or picky less like that. See, I you, like I like steak on the bone. I don't know why. It men gives do, a lot women of don't. I think most. That's just the way it is. It's women from Mars, men from Venus, yeah. or something like that. Women from Venus. And then a little bit of Parmesan on your mushrooms, and there you have it. Beautiful. Thank you, Ivan. Oh, you're welcome. Looks marvelous. And if you want the recipe, of course, you can find it. Did, did am I saying anything that makes sense today? Marveloso, marveloso. It sounds good. Marvelous. Though. It's operatic. Operatic is always good. <laughs> Just go to our website. <laughs> when you're working with steaks, you've heard of aged. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody right. says age, well, there's two ways to age. There's a dry age where the steak goes on the bone and there's a fluorescent light and it can age anywhere from three to seven weeks. And then oh. they cut off all that black and natural enzyme. Or there's a cryovac age, which is in the plastic bags with no oxygen, um, which is the majority of the industry. Mm -hmm. You want to go at least 21 to 35 days. Oh. Meat has to have age on it. Otherwise, it's too tough. Um, so get See, a good it gets age. better as it gets it, older. It gets better as it gets older. That's why I like in that philosophy.